Hello, so this is a tutorial to go along with geoprocessing. So it's a review of buffering and clipping and erasing. Um, and I put a link to the data in the description down below so you can download those and follow along um, or do it yourself beforehand and see if we get to the same answer. Um, so the question that I'm posing here is, I wanna start a day case Take care, a daycare center in Framingham, Massachusetts. Um, and I've got two selection criteria or two, um, I guess, geoprocessing criteria. One is that I want to make sure that whatever site I choose is far away from sites that are known to have hazardous material. Um, and second, uh, that I want to be relatively close, so within half a kilometer of open space, so I can take the kids for a walk to someplace nice. Um, so those are the only two pieces of criteria that I'm assigning here for, for this walkthrough. Um, and then ultimately what I wanna do at the end of this is to, I guess I should say, you know, like what's the shape of this area and how much area do I have? That's sort of the question that, that we wanna end up with. All right. So here are the data um, that yours may not look exactly the same. I've already clipped uh, the open space and the hazardous materials to the town of Framingham. Um, you can see all of the towns of Massachusetts. So here's where we are in the world. Um, for, for our purposes here, we're just going to treat Framingham as if it was an island. So we're not going to worry about open space and hazardous material sites that are outside in, the in any of the towns that are surrounding Framingham. All right, so that first question, let's start with one of the two. So I'm going to start with the hazmat um, piece. And because I <laughs> uh, get confused easily, I like to just turn off the layers that I'm not working with. Um, when I'm not working with them, that just makes it a little easier for me to keep track of what it is that I'm doing. Um, first thing, though, that I want to do, I think, is just create a shape that is just the town of Framingham and doesn't have all of these other towns surrounding it. Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, I could select this by attributes by looking for town equal to Framingham, or I, since I know that this is Framingham, I can just go ahead and select it. Um, and then I'm gonna export that data. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to do this um, at this point, we could do it later on, or we could have just do the geoprocessing with Framingham selected. Uh, so I'm going to call this Framingham. And remember, anytime you do operations in GIS and a feature is selected, then whatever you're doing should just operate on the selected features. So this should create um, just the shape of Framingham. And actually, I'm going to keep towns turned off because I don't even need towns um, anymore. So again, didn't have to do that, but it's just gonna make it a little bit easier on me for visualization. We could also, you know, anytime when we're doing clips or erases later on, we could have just executed them with Framingham selected too. All right, so I've said, I want to exclude from this gray shape. I don't really love that gray shape. Let's make it a brighter color. Uh, I love pink, okay. I'm gonna make Framingham pink. Um, let us exclude from this areas that are within a kilometer, a thousand meters of hazardous material sites. So in this case, I don't have a shape of a thousand meters away from hazardous material sites, right? So in order to actually remove that from another polygon, I'm gonna to have to create that shape. And the way that I create that sh shape is through a buffer. So the input into my buffer is my hazardous material sites. Um, output hazmat buffer is totally fine. I wanna make sure that this is my one kilometer distance. And then the dissolve type in here, remember a dissolve of no dissolve um, means that each of these features are gonna be distinct and separate. If all that you care about is removing a particular pattern um, or putting together all of the shapes so that you can see it as a single thing, uh, then a dissolve all is a nice way to do it. But you know what, for just for fun, let's do it both ways because it, you know, we can always 
run a dissolve tool after the fact if we wanted to. So here's what happens when I have a dissolve of no dissolve. If I open my attribute table of my hazmat sites, slowly opening my hazmat site <laughs> data, there were 29 hazardous material sites, which means that there are 29 rows with information about each of those hazardous material sites. So if in my buffer, I wanted to know which hazardous material site, you know, I want to make sure that the Henry Street garage um, is, you know, that I retain the information of areas that are within a kilometer of the Henry Street garage, then no dissolve is the way to go, right? I still have those same 29 features. I still have all of my same input attributes and I have a unique buffer associated with each of these different, um, these different hazmat sites. In contrast, we could do a dissolve all. I'm just gonna call that buffer dissolve. Um, and that will mean that uh, rather than having all of those 29 different rows, we'll just have a single feature outlining the sort of bubble shape around all of these uh, hazardous material sites. So what I've gained in this is not sort of repeating area, if I cared about that. Um, what I've lost, though, is the individual attributes associated with those hazardous material sites, right? I should only have a single row in this new output data set. Um, when I'm erasing something, when I'm taking something away from another, it actually doesn't matter <laughs> whether it's dissolved or not dissolved, because I'm removing it, uh, you know, I'm not retaining it. Um, but for our purposes, let's go ahead and uh, just use the dissolved one um, because it's a little bit easier to, to look at and I don't actually care about the attributes of various garages and stuff like that. Um, so what I want now, if I'm sort of looking at this shape, what I would like to retain are all of the pink areas and what I would like to lose or remove are all of these what are looking kind of purpley areas because um, GIS default is to this sort of transparent blue color um, when I'm creating buffers. So this minus this, right, is what I want. That tool is the erase tool. And the order matters in the erase, right? So you wanna start, your input is the thing that you wanna keep. So I wanna keep my pink stuff. <laughs> so that means that my input is gonna be Framingham and my erase is going to be my hazmat buffer dis. You'll notice actually, which is kind of handy over here that the order in these dropdown menus is the same as the order in my contents. So if you're looking for something and you're trying to remember like which is which, one way to help you out with that is just to turn on the ones that you're working with right now. Um, but another way is to know that like, okay, it's the second one down is the, the one that I wanna dissolve. So I'm gonna call this, rather than Framingham Erase, I'm gonna call it Framingham minus Hazmat just to make it a little bit easier for me to remember <clears throat> what's going on there. And hopefully this will give us the, that pink area. Um, GIS has very conveniently changed their symbology so that the input features and that pink and the output features are exactly the same symbology, um, which I find actually kind of annoying because I like to know that something has happened, but no big deal. We just turn off the things then we can see that something has indeed happened. We have taken away those areas that are within a kilometer of the hazardous material sites. Okay, cool. So that was half of the question that I was looking for. The next piece of the question is, now I wanna look for sites that are within 500 meters of some of this open space so that I can take these kitties for a walk and enjoy some open space or nature. I'm going to turn off my hazmat sites because I no longer care about that. And I'm no longer working with any of these other things because I've gotten to the point where, you know, Framingham minus hazmat, I no longer need to deal with Framingham or any of my hazmat buffers, right? So if I want to look for the areas that are within 500 meters of open space, again, I'm going back to that buffer, right? I don't have a shape yet until I create it that represents 500 meters 
away from an open space. All right, so I'm gonna input my open space. I'm gonna call this open space Framingham buffer. That's totally fine. Little kitties can't walk that far. So we'll do 500, 500 kilometers, might be a little excessive, 500 meters. Um, remember our dissolve type, right? So in this case, we actually, the whether our dissolve type in this case matters because later on we're gonna intersect or clip. We're looking for the overlap between our open space Framingham and the, the town of Framingham. So if I don't dissolve them, then my shape's gonna look pretty messy because I'm gonna have a poly I'm gonna have a buffer around each of these different open space features, a unique polygon around all of them. Um, we can do that, you know, like just to see, just as a reminder of what it looks like. Um, but ultimately I'm gonna need to dissolve it so that I can just get a single smooth feature and also so that I can calculate area correctly. But let's go ahead and take the long cut on that one, I'm gonna go with no dissolve. Um, the other uh, piece that's worth noting anytime you're buffering a polygon is that you can either buffer everything, including the area of the polygon. So 500 meters around the polygon, as well as the polygon, which is full, or you can say, exclude the input polygon from the buffer, um, which would give you just that sort of donut shape around the outside of the different polygons. Um, I'm gonna do this the long way again, in case, because we know the steps of dealing with it if, uh, if we need to remove those interior polygons. Um, so here's the long way, right? Uh, those, by making this just outside of the polygons only and dissolving this, that would be a single step of doing all of those different processes. All right, good. So here are our areas. And when in this case, it looks like we're going to include just about all of Framingham. And in, in fact, that's within, you know, 500 meters of an open space. Um, I can't build a daycare center. I can't open a daycare center in open space, right? So that's the reason for wanting to sort of the ring around everything. So if I had done this, and let's say at this point, I go ahead and I clip my, um, it doesn't matter the order here because all I care about ultimately is the shape. Um, if I clip that based on my Framingham minus the hazmat, I'm just gonna call this temp file because <laughs> it's gonna be a problematic um, when, I get, when I get this output. The problem with this output is that if I wanted to actually calculate the area of all of this, right? So I'm just looking at right now the blue parts. The blue parts are all these are definitely all areas that are available to me. Um, actually, they're sorry, they're not actually all the areas that are available to me because they include the open spaces and I want to remove the open spaces. But one thing to note um, is that if I tried to calculate area, for example, of, you know, like this space here, this space would be double counted. You know, if I had an area, got my area over here, if I summed all of these things up using statistics, I would be double counting a lot of this land area um, because I've got overlapping buffers. So if I actually want a single unit, a single measurement of land area, overlapping buffers is not the way to do it. Um, the other piece is that I've got all of the um, open space included in these buffer areas. So I could either do this by dissolving that buffer that I just created, and then erasing the open space from the dissolved buffer. Um, or I can go ahead and just like run my buffer <laughs> the shortcut way again. Um, so I'm buffering again around the open space. Um, it's gonna be buffer one, that's fine. I want 500 meters. In this case, I'm gonna say exclude the polygon and I want you to go ahead and dissolve all of the features together. 
And this is gonna look quite a bit different, <laughs> I think, um, from the, uh, this original buffer that we created. Okay, so now we've got a buffer that if I turn this off, those are actually hollow spaces, right? So we have excluded the insides of the polygons. And we've also, you know, rather than having same shape or almost the same shape minus the excluded polygons, let me make this a better color. I'll make it lovely orange. Um, right, so one is dissolved, one is not at all dissolved. All right, so this shape, I've now gotten to the point where I've got land area that is within 500 meters of an open space, but not including the open space. And then remember, I've got this one, um, which is all of the land area that is in Framingham that is uh, more than a kilometer away from a hazardous material site. So I could, uh, I can't actually remember how to do the um, transparency quickly. So don't worry about that <laughs> right now. Um, what I want essentially is stuff that I can't see in here, right? I want the overlap between the orange and the pink area. So like kind of what's behind here that is both pink and orange. And if I'm looking for overlap between two things, um, then either a clip or an intersect is the way to go. In this case, because I don't care about the attributes of either of them, I'm just looking for a shape. Clip is easy, easy to do. Actually, the order of this doesn't even matter because um, I'm just looking for the intersection. I don't care about the attributes of the open space buffer. I don't care about the attributes of Framingham either. And then since this is my final, this is my daycare options, I'm going to name it as such so that I don't end up with, you know, it's pretty normal to end up with a whole bunch of temporary intermediary files over here. So here are my daycare options, right? So these are areas that are outside of the open space within 500 meters of some open space and not within one kilometer of uh, any hazardous material sites. And if I wanted to figure out what the area of this is, uh, because this is in a geo database, uh, Arc Pro is automatically calculating area for us. Very nice of it. Um, we don't know what the units are until we look at the properties and find that this is in mass state plane and the linear units are meters, which means that area of this is going to be calculated in square meters and shape is uh, length is going to be calculated in meters, I don't want area, I want area in square kilometers instead, or in square miles or whatever, um, then I can always add a field and calculate that myself. It should look real similar <laughs> in uh, numbers to my area in square meters tell it, give me some area. And I want this to be in square kilometers. Okay. Okay. All right, so I found that there are actually, that's quite a bit of land area to work with, 29 square kilometers or 29 million <laughs> square meters to work with for potential daycare centers um, in uh, Framingham. So I think that answered our questions, our criteria of greater than a kilometer away from hazmat sites, less than 500 meters from open space. And what does that thing look like? Here's what it looks like. <laughs> There's what it looks like. Um, and how much area do I have? I've got 29 square kilometers. So hopefully that was a um, helpful walkthrough of some of the geoprocessing tools of buffering, erasing, and clipping. Thanks.